Hey yo, what's going on everybody? It's Tylerius aka Ty Killington. Yeah, man. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be discussing 10 of some of the coolest tips, tricks, and features that have come out with the After Hours DLC. All right, now some of these you guys already know. Some of them you've already seen by other YouTubers, but there's several that I have not seen anybody discuss and talk about. Okay, so bear with me as we go through all these, and hopefully you learn something that will help you out in the game. Alright, so the first one. All of the civilians in Los Santos, all the club goers and the patrons, they go in through the front door. They have to wait in the line. You are a VIP. You're the club owner. Go in through your garage. Go in through the back door, through the actual garage itself. It's much easier to move around. You can run. You don't have to walk through the actual dance floor in the club because you can't run inside the club. You can kind of speed walk a little bit but you can't run and that really is a pain in the ass it's kind of you know annoying and the majority of the time you're just gonna be doing your business stuff so if you can go into the back door you can run up to your office it's much easier to navigate and move around right you probably already know that though next up is the nightclub management inside the interaction menu all right the nightclub management you can only really access this while you're inside your nightclub but it has a lot of cool different features in there you have your entry cost uh, you, can, you know, you can set it to free or a hundred bucks, whatever. Nobody knows where that money goes, so just put it on free. Uh, you can enable or disable your dry ice, which just kind of adds fog. Nightclub access, DJ booth access, VIP, uh, private club to where, you know, you can just keep it to where it's private. Nobody can come in there. In the same menu screen with the interaction menu, you can also adjust your club goer's dress code. You've got EDM, techno, and then just regular. The EDM is pretty cool because it makes everyone wear like real vibrant, bright, uh, kind of the trippy type kind of clothing uh, for that genre. It's really good for some snapmatics, some videos, and things like that. So that's what it does. It kind of changes everybody that their their clothes in the actual club itself. If you switch it out to techno, uh, you'll switch that out. You'll have to re-walk back into the club. Now everybody has a much darker attire on uh, that it matches that whole techno kind of vibe, right? So once again, if you want to go for that that theme, everyone's uh, all almost blacked out. It's a darker, you know, environment with everybody in there with all their dark clothes on. That's really cool too. That's that's how you access it. You can also access the entry uh, cost, the entry access, and the dress code at your actual cashier desk right as you enter in the club. So there's two spots in there that you can do that. It's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, next up, you have. A pretty cool feature. I didn't know about this. One of my uh, crew members told me about it. You can actually dim your lights and adjust your privacy glass. The glass that you have inside your your office and looking out on the floor, you can dim those and tint them out. So that's pretty cool. You can turn the lights up and off or off and on or whatever. Uh, you know, dim them, make them brighter. Once again, really cool. It sets a vibe, sets a theme. Uh, I can do some cool stuff with you know. If you're making videos or whatever, some Snapmatics, I like that a lot. It's a pretty cool little touch. We've seen that in other businesses as well. Uh, the Doomsday Heist, you can do that with your office in there. And like I was saying, you know, you may already know this. You may have seen this day one. I totally overlooked this. I didn't even really pay attention to it. Uh, and like I said, I didn't know until I believe it was Party was the one that was doing that and was showing some people. So that's pretty cool. I mean, little features like that. All right, so next up, we have the wall safe, the gun locker, and you also have a clothing area where you can change your clothes. So I've showed you this before already. You have a wall safe, which is where you'll get your daily income for the nightclub based on your popularity. And you also have a gun safe, which comes with the nightclub. It's right here on the other side of your office desk. Uh, so if you'd never bought one of these for your other businesses, um, you get this one now that comes for free. I mean, with the actual... Uh, nightclub business itself and let me tell you if you've never used that it is very very nice to be able to manage your weapons in your weapon wheel that's what the gun locker does you can take guns away add them in there it's awesome it's very very convenient you have to scroll through 55 pistols to get to one you want and back here behind your office you have your clothing spot where you can do all that and change your outfits I like that a lot very good so next up we got drinks there's new drinks in there there's a couple of cool features though if your club is not popular you will not have access to them all right but if your club is banging you will have full access to them 
They cost thirty thousand, fifty thousand, and a hundred and fifty grand. And if you buy the hundred and fifty grand bottle, you get a cool little interaction. Um, <laughs> it's so corny, it's so stupid. Totally not worth one hundred fifty thousand. I mean, it's worth it one time just to do it. But you get your bottle, you tap X to shake the champagne bottle up, and as you shake it, it'll start to get you know all fizzy, and then it'll eventually pop. And you'll be spraying champagne everywhere. So once again, pretty cool little feature. <laughs> Just dumb stuff like that. Um, for 150 grand, though, like I said, it's worth doing it once just to check it out. But it's nothing I would continuously do over and over. But you know, if you got money like that, then go for it, right? All right. So uh, next, we have some new actions and dance moves. Okay. So you got, I believe it's eight new actions. It's pretty cool. If you just, uh, and you can activate them in the interaction menu by hitting X, or if you're outside the interaction menu, you already have something set, you just tap bo in uh, both your joysticks and it shouldn't set it off. You can uh, tap them once or multi tap your joystick buttons and it'll do a little bit more intense. You can hold it down as well, and the guy will just keep on doing the actual interaction your character will. So that's pretty cool. Your dance styles, you got getting down, zoned in, stuff like that. And you can go to the dance floor and you can actually put all those to work. And as you see in the top left corner, you have a little menu right here where you can do your, your dance moves. You hold X and L2 for intensity. If you tap X to the beat, uh, it'll help you, you know, it'll gain your rhythm and stuff like that. And this is also how you'll unlock some awards, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. So that's pretty, pretty cool. I like that. Very nice. It's really fun to do, honestly. So here are the new awards. There's a couple of new awards that are, and there's four of them, that can be found in a new nightclub awards uh, category or section. And that's pretty nice. And then, you know, we'll go over a few of the things that you have to do to actually unlock these and get them done. So the first one is get drunk in any nightclub. I believe it's to do it like five times for the bronze. And continuously do it, you'll get a Kiflam shirt, which we'll talk about too. Uh, dance perfectly in a nightclub with no miss beats for five minutes. Have 100 unique players visit your nightclub, so 100, you know, real players. And then uh, dance to Solomon's set in any nightclub for 60 minutes and here's some of the new there's new trophies and interactive objects that you get inside your desk you have that for the player battles the business battles you have this one for the dancing uh, for the Solomon set you have this one right here um, for the popularity then you get these figurines for the businesses you get impotent rage for uh, selling a whole bunch of the coke which is the uh, the South American imports you got the passport for document forgery you got some cash that'll show up in there laying around for obviously your counterfeit cash. You have a little crate here for your crates. You know, this is gonna be like for the sporting goods or whatever. A little baggie of some uh some some meth. <laughs> so stupid. Get an ammo crate in there, obviously for gun running. I believe gun running gets two of them that spawn in, which is pretty cool. There's the other one right there. A little box of bullets. Um what else we got over here? We have a nice little brick of weed that you get obviously for your organic goods, your weed business. And they'll start showing up in places, you know, inside your money safe, your wall safe right there on your desk. Uh, big shout out to Archangel uh, in the GTA forums uh, for hooking us up with this. Here's the Kiflam shirt right here. Uh, you'll get that for you just passing out drunk. It's a random thing in the club. Solomon logo tees, all that good stuff. So, All right, next up we're going to talk about raids. Okay, a lot of you guys are going to ask me about raids and the man... Fun MW2 has um, given us some information about how the raids will operate and how you can get raided. And this is very, very important. So, Tez comes out. He says the raids were four hours of inactivity. And inactivity meaning playing free mode without any mission-related activity. And the exposure is greater than 20% of your total stock. Now, if you have the security upgrade, you'll be allotted eight hours of inactivity and then that kicks off once your uh, inventory is at 40% above your total stock. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, so definitely, it's worth getting the upgrade. It gives you an extra four hours. It doubles up your inactivity time, and it doubles up the amount of stock that you'll have in there before it starts to kick off. And that will help out a lot of people because most people will be selling smaller inventories. So, bam, there you go. You can kind of go AFK and do some things, and you're fine. Somebody asked, they said, hey, what's missions-related activity? And he says, um, I mean anything that involves a mission. VIP work, resupply missions count as one, but that's in free mode, so I'm not sure if it will prevent the raid timer from progressing. I'm sure missions that separate you from free mode stop the raid timer. And if you want, if you want to risk it, 
make sure you have members, organization, or Merceau Club. The cops only succeed when they kill you and all of your members. So, um, play it safe. Just do a mission every now and again. I know from uh, you know doing a lot of business stuff. I think it might work with uh, you know doing free mode things like resupplies and stuff like that. Uh, however, like I said, just you know every now and again, pop in a mission, knock one out, get some easy money. It's no big deal. That'll just you know keep you safe and keep you from getting raided. Because I have heard rumors of people getting raided and losing all their inventory. I don't know. I have not had it happen to me yet. So there's that. All right, next up is the actual delivery process, okay? So for the Speedo van, you'll need 0 to 90 units of stock, and you'll have the Speedo van, all right? That's how that works. If you have 91 to 180 units of stock that you'll be selling, you will receive the mule, all right? So up to 90, all you need is the Speedo van. If you're doing above 90 units, you'll have to have a mule as well. Now, if you go 181 to all the way up to 360, it will require the MTL Pounder. The good thing is, is that every single cell mission is only one vehicle. The only thing that changes is the amount of stock that you're selling, which will require you to have those other types of vehicles right there. But it's only one vehicle, so very solo friendly. All right, so those are 10 tips, tricks, hints, cool features that I think you guys definitely need to know like i said i know some of you already know this it's been talked about by other youtubers but there it is anyways and hopefully i gave you some information that did help out all right make sure you subscribe to the channel for the illest rules content the game is used by me it's supposed to matter that like button stay dangerous peace out